Okay, to simply put it, behavior trees are instructions that you give to a program to follow in a specific order. And for this tutorial, we are gonna need few things. One is going to be the behavior tree editor plugin right here that you can get from this dev forum post right here at the top. This is the plugin, but you also need to go to the GitHub and grab the behavior tree free and behavior tree creator. And we need to put them as module scripts inside of the studio and we start off by getting the behavior tree creator because this one requires the behavior tree script so you just open it in this path and press on this button right here which says copy raw file it's gonna say copied then go into studio i already have a module script here we can name this one b3 creator and just paste the code into it right here then we need to add another module under the creator and this one requires the behavior 3.5 so we need to name it like this then we go back to the github and this one is named behavior 3.3 but it's in version 5 so don't worry about the name again just copy the row and just paste it in inside of the module right here and this behavior script is gonna be used later on when we want to set up the tree from a script but now to actually create a tree i'm just gonna add a folder inside of the server storage and name this one trees then go to the plugins tab and press on create. This is automatically going to create a tree for us. I'm gonna name this one tutorial tree. And then we have all of these nodes right here and I'm gonna tell you what they do. So I'm just gonna explain them going from the top. And the first one is the sequence node and the sequence if we connect it, it continues going through every single one of the nodes that it basically has under it until there is a failure result. And what is the result? Well, right now I need to add a task node to just show it to you. This is basically a script node, so if you go to the edit, you can see that we have success, fail and running. And you have start, finish and run functions. Everything is just explained in the comments right here. But this one you can see that it returns a success. And if I were to connect it right here, this node would get the index 1, same as the sequence previously. That means that it's going to be the first task from this node that's going to happen. If I were to duplicate it and connect it right here, this one would get the index 2. And in the sequence node, if this first task node would return a failure, then it wouldn't move to the other task node. So the sequence node basically happens until something fails. But then there is a selector node. And the selector is basically the opposite of sequence. If there is a success result returned to the selector node, it's not going to continue to other nodes. Oh, and also if there is no success returned to the selector node anywhere, from this task, let's say this task returned a failure and this one would do the same, this node wouldn't get a success result and it would return a failure state to the node that it was connected to. The sequence works the same except it's opposite. Right, then we have random, which basically selects a random, so it would either do this node or the node next to it. And then we have a while. Now this while node only takes two children. The first child is the condition, so this would be the condition, and the second one is an action. And it repeats either whenever the condition is met or the action is met. And let's say that this task right here would return a failure, then the node would return a failure itself too. But if this succeeded, it's gonna move to another node right here. And if this one also succeeded, then this while node succeeded also. And now we have these green nodes. An invert basically returns a failure into success and vice versa. The succeed forces a succeed state. Fail does the same except failure. And then we have a repeat. And this repeat is basically similar to the while node, except we have a break on fail option. I will need to zoom it right here. And then we also have a count that we can add it. This is the number of repeats. Or we can also make the repeats infinite. And if you thought of this while node as a while loop, you can think of this repeat node as repeat task until a condition is met, basically. So for example, you could add a sequence node to the repeat count, which could, let's say, do a check. This would be the check node. And depending on the check, this would do a condition, which could, for example, if the condition is met right here, break the loop, and the tree would continue down the hierarchy, so it would move to this node right here. Then we have the task node that I talked about. This is basically where you want to program the logic and return and return the tree state. And we also have a blackboard query. And the blackboard query is a query that can allow us, instead of doing like checks right here, because we have the blackboard right here in the script, which is the object's blackboard that we're gonna set up later while making the tree, instead of having to add another task node and return failure or success in it, we can just have this blackboard query with the given key, let's say, is tired, set to true, 
If is tired would be set to true, that would mean that the condition is met and the tree wouldn't continue. If it was in like a selector node like in this example right here. Then we have a tree node. For the tree node, I have to create another tree. This one will be named tutorial tree 2. This one is basically how you would switch between trees. So I'm just gonna move this one there. So this selector would repeat. See that the tired is false. Then it would do a while loop which would return a failure. And if all of these conditions are met, then it would move to the other tree right here. It would start going through the logic the same as it was going inside of this tree then the root node is basically just a root node that everything starts from and the comment is just a comment that you can add so that's basically the brief summary of all the nodes and now i'm gonna show you how to set up an npc with them but before i do that do you guys know that i have channel memberships now where you get all of these amazing perks and benefits on my channel and also on my discord server that you should also join but anyway now i'm just going to remove this tree because we don't need it and the first thing I'm going to need is a character. So I go into the avatar tab and just do a rig builder, R15 and blocky avatar. This is going to be our guy. And I also need to change the animate script to be a server script just so he's gonna have animations so now everything is basically set up so now we have our guy right here i'm going to name this one npc and i'm going to put him inside of the server storage and now i'm going to add a script inside of the server script service Name this one npc run and then this script will have a module named npc setup and inside of this npc setup we just want to have an init function so it's gonna be init npc and this is the place where we have to also require the creator so the local b3 is equal to i also need the server script service so b3 is equal to require server script service that b3 creator and we also need the tree from the server storage. So we do server storage and then tree folder. And now just to have the setup running, I'm going to create a simple tree, which is just going to have the root node. And I'm going to name this one NPC tree. Also, you need to make sure that this tree is not a normal folder. It has to have the workspace and the nodes. But going back, we do local NPC tree is equal to tree folder dot NPC tree. Then we do npc model, server storage, wait for child, npc. And this guy is basically going to spawn in this location. So it would be good if you added an npc spawn part, which is set to can't collide and uncord. Name this one spawn. Then get the workspace. Get the spawn part like this. And this npc model is actually going to be a clone. Then we do parent is equal to workspace. Then we pivot the model to the part. And this is where we also create our tree. So we do current npc tree is equal to b3 create and then the tree folder. So it's going to be the npc tree. Then we do a table, which is the object table, and this is the object table that we pass the current behavior tree to run with, so you can do npc is equal to the npc model, then we also have the blackboard. And instead of the blackboard, like I said, we can add is tired, and set it to false. And just as a fail save, so the tree doesn't run multiple times at once, we can add a tree running state. Then add a update function, which has a placeholder and delta time. Then we can do if tree running, then return end. Else we do result is equal to current npc tree run. And in this run, we need to pass the npc object table right there. Then we want to set the tree running state is equal to and check if the result is equal to free. Because previously we had success, failure and running. Running is number three right there. Then we need run service. and connect it to the stepped event. And now inside of the npc run script, we need to require the npc setup. And we want to do npc setup and init npc. And now if we run the tree, it should just spawn the npc for now and give us an error. Our pivot tool uses a cframe, not a vector. And this shutter is just an error from the animate script. So I can just remove this one right there. 
and now I just run it again. Now it actually gave errors on the tree because the root doesn't have any connections to the other nodes. But we basically have our NPC guy right there and this actually, this has actually built the tree. And just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make the NPC just walk around to certain points with the use of the behavior trees. So I'm just going to add this part for the NPC to walk around and I'm going to use few attachments and they will be basically just points that the NPC has to walk to. So this is the point one and this is going to be point two. So I'm going to use pathfinding service for this tutorial and I will be also using the agent settings and the agent settings needs agent radius, height, we can make the NPC not be able to jump or climb. I can also add a waypoint spacing. Then instead of the object table, we can add a path index for which we will need a pathfinding service. We do pathfinding service, create path and we pass the agent settings. Then we can add a waypoint part and set it as the spawn part because it has the attachments inside of it right here. Then we can also add the is dead index to basically check if the health was lower or equal to zero in case the NPC just fell into the void or something. And now after we have this logic done, we can get to creating the tree. So I'm going to create another one, name this one idle or NPC idle and just add a tree node right here. Right, we use this folder as a starting point which goes into the idle tree and this is where the logic is going to happen. So first I have to add a selector node and this is why we added the is dead in the blackboard to basically check if the NPC which spawned was dead. We can just copy the is dead. So if the key is dead is set to true, then it's going to return true to the selector node and it's not going to continue the logic under this node. But now what do we want to do in the logic where well, we want to add another tree? So we go to the NPC tree and press on create again. This is going to be the NPC move. And we want to go to it from the idle tree. And right now we are just basically telling the tree if the NPC isn't dead, then it can move. And now I'm just going to do the most simple logic which is just a sequence and a task. And this one is just going to be move to waypoint. And just to see that everything works, I'm going to just build the tree. Right now we can see that the tree is basically running, but there is no scripting logic or anything happening. So you just have our guy standing there. So now let's just give him an option to move. So you just do edit and inside of this script, we don't need the comments and I'm not going to use any of these functions except the run. So first thing you need to do is get the attachment waypoints. And if you go to the setup, the waypoint part is inside of the object. So we do object that waypoint part and just get children. We also need our NPC, so we just do object that NPC model. And later on, I already know that it's not going to fill stuff up, so I'm just gonna give this one a model type. Then humanoid root part, which is a base part, is equal to NPC, and find fish child, and humanoid root part. How oh, this should be like this. And also the humanoid, which is find fish child of class humanoid. And just for everything to fill up later, we can do path is equal to, because we create an, an object path right here with the pathfinding service, so path with the path type is equal to object.path. Now we need logic to basically just get the random waypoint for the NPC to go to. So we do if there is any waypoints, then I need to do this more than zero. We don't want the NPC to move to the closest waypoint. So we do closest is equal to nil. Then we want to loop through the attachment waypoints and do if not closest, then closest is equal to the attachment. But now we want to check the magnitude. So the current magnitude and closest magnitude. And this one is humanoid root part dot position minus attachment dot word position dot magnitude. And closest is just from closest that word position. Then we do if current magnitude is less than closest magnitude, then we do closest is equal to the attachment. Then if you have the closest attachment, then you want to remove it from the attachment waypoints table. Just because we want to select a random attachment from the attachment waypoints later. And, and we just don't want to select the closest one. So now to get the random waypoint, first of win the random generator. So we do random.new. And this is also a attachment type. is equal to attachment waypoints from random gen next integer from 0 to the length of 
attachment waypoints. And as a just in case, we do if not random waypoint, then return end. Then we want to calculate the path to the random waypoint. So you do local success, result is equal to pcal and function. And we just do path compute async from the humanoid root parts position to the random waypoint that word position, like this. Then we just do if success and we also need to check for the path status. So we do path status is equal to enum that path status success. Then we do local path waypoints is equal to path get waypoints, like this. And now we just want to move along the waypoints, so we do for index waypoint, which is a path waypoint type, in pairs path waypoints do. And then we have to get the humanoid, and use the move to method, to move him to the waypoint that position, like this. And we also need to wait for him to finish moving, so we do move to finish, or humanoid that move to finished, and wait. And this should basically be all the logic, so the NPC is going to move from one waypoint to another, except if it gives an error, and something didn't work out. And that's because the NPC is nil, or because it was supposed to be object that NPC, not NPC model. So now we just do run, and let's see. And it says did not call a success, and that's because, where is it, this one? This one needs to actually not return, and same with this one, I think. So instead of doing this like that, we can do if random waypoint then, and just move all the logic inside of it. And now we should be able to just run it. And let's see. Oh, he's not. Oh, never mind. He's moving. All right. So yeah, now our NPC is going to go back and forth between these two waypoints. And now I'm going to move this waypoint away. And you can see that it's going to be following it. Now he's gonna move through here like so because they are, this is the closest path. And also there is a problem with the animate script. Generally, you don't want to use the animate script from Roblox to play animations on NPCs, because as you can see, this guy is kind of choppy sometimes, and it looks like he just has problems walking, but this is just the animation and not the pathfinding series or anything, but yeah. You will just have to write your own logic for animating them. But anyways, that's going to be everything for this tutorial, and see ya guys!